माई सेवन चक्र एपिसोड टू थर्टी वन यू आर हु यू आर लुकिंग फॉर द सेवन चक्र स्वर्णिंग फोर टीज ऑफ एनर्जी पोजिशन थ्रू आउट आउट बॉडी फ्रॉम द बेस ऑफ द स्पाइन टू द क्राउन ऑफ द हेड फॉर थाउजेंड ऑफ यूज This ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to my seven chakras and now your host Aditya Jai Kumar. Kumar. What's up Action Tribe AJ here founder and host of My Seven Chakras the show where we always dive deep into the ancient world to uncover nuggets of wisdom and will help you find your life's purpose so no matter what made you click on our podcast button today realize that you have arrived at the correct destination my friend my goal with the show is to ensure that everyone who needs to hear this episode becomes aware of it and i am depending on you for this so make sure you share something about what you learned today on facebook instagram pinterest or twitter using the hashtag my seven chakras and hashtag action tribe that's hashtag my seven chakras and hashtag action tribe so that we are all over the interwebs and if you haven't downloaded our official reading list already then make sure you go to my7chakras.com forward slash reading list that's my7chakras.com forward slash reading list so in case you haven't listened to a previous episode uh, know that that at the end of every episode our featured guests shares one new book recommendation and i know that many of you collect the names of these books and i've made that a whole lot easier for you because i've created a special pdf featuring 21 of the most recommended books till date some of the books are the alchemist by polo coelho hands of light by barbara brennan energy medicine by donna eden and think and grow rich by napoleon hill which is one of my favorites to download the entire list of 21 books visit my7chakras.com/reading-list All right, we're all set now to bring you our super awesome guest for today, Zarathustra. So, Zarathustra, are you ready to inspire? I am. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to awesome. be at your po- podcast. Wonderful. So, Zarathustra is an internationally known spiritual teacher and a fifth dimensional quantum healer. He travels the globe sharing his deep knowledge on subjects such as third eye activation, shamanic healing, psychic surgery and how to find your inner peace through raising your vibration to the fifth dimension. After years of seeking and visiting many spiritual masters and healers, Zarathustra came to the realization of that which we seek resides in our own hearts he has created a unique blend of teachings from east and west and is able to transmit his understanding of the absolute to his audience zarathustra's healing and self awakening path began at the age of 21 he studied different schools of mysticism such as sufism buddhism and hinduism and shamanism and was led to a number of different profound teachers and healers including osho punja ji aka papa ji and amma ji the hugging mother and john of god zarathustra has helped thousands of people all over the world in removing the obstacles that prevent them from experiencing inner peace inner silence and self love and reintroducing them to their true selves at a soul level so zarathustra welcome to our show and thank you so much for joining me uh, thank you for having me it's my pleasure Awesome. So let's begin with some inspiration. My question to you is: What is your favorite inspirational quote, and how does that apply in your day-to-day life? Well, uh, my favorite inspiration quote is, is: "You are who you are looking for. Uh, that which uh, we're seeking is resides within ourselves, and, and this is the very." Uh, my uh, inspirational quote that i always share with my audience and if somebody really pays pay attention um they it, it could be a little bit shocking it uh, catches your uh, attention immediately as far as uh what do you mean you are who you are looking for and it does trigger something and activate something within us wonderful Thanks a lot for sharing that and the way I take it is when I say the words you are who you are looking for means that from the place that we are at not the physical plane but from where we are there is no time and space and so if you are who you are looking for 
means that you have the potential within to transform yourselves no matter how you see yourself transforming and if you realize that uh, truth that is which we are seeking for resides within, our, within ourselves that sort of empowers ourselves to make that change rather than making us feel helpless that you know we need something exterior to change ourselves but wonderful quote you are who you are looking for action tribe and with that let's dive in so zarathustra what exactly is fifth dimensional healing uh fifth dimensional quantum healing uh it's a uh, shamanic practice by a shaman who has access to a sub atomic field of energy and uh and basically the way it operates is by raising our vibrations to a higher frequency and there's different realms of existence that they make themselves available uh to the shaman or the practitioner by raising vibrations which they're already here uh but they're not accessible to the average person because the average person vibration is not in that frequency so that's what fifth dimensional quantum healing is and uh i mean that's in, in uh, that's it, it, it is in a nutshell but uh when we do access these realms then there's extraordinary possibilities become available um everything is a field of potential and possibility and um the key is to arrive at that place and positioning ourselves uh in a place that things become impossible becomes possible and that's what fifth dimensional quantum healing is based on got it thanks for sharing like you mentioned it's a shamanic practice to access that sub atomic energy field and that is done by raising our vibration usually the shaman who is i guess trained in raising his or her vibration uh but but when we access that realm we access extraordinary powers is is that what you're saying or abilities so could you you know talk to us a bit more about what are the uh, possibilities that lie for us once we are able to access this this field yeah well i mean our, uh, the um, the infinite is um the the very uh, uh, our very existence and being in this life there is infinite number of possibilities always here and yeah. god, god existence it doesn't have a beginning or it doesn't have an end it's an it's infinite so recognizing that life is infinite and coming out of this um one dimensional way of thinking that only things are in a certain way and they can't be in any other ways and just breaking through those barriers and opening our minds to anything is possible at any moment mm-hmm. that by itself is like a crack in the system and mm-hmm. uh and and takes us to this other place that okay so it's all infinite and there's a lot of different possibilities and uh so things can immediately change or bodies can he- heal or people mm. can transform as this has happened many times in our lives uh mm. we have heard of miraculous or spontaneous healing like uh a paralyzed person has been able to get up and walk uh that that is recorded it has happened it is on videotape um many different things has happened in life like like a maybe a 90 pound mother found uh her baby under the tire of a car yeah. and all of a sudden she was able to lift the 5000 pound car and uh, get the baby out so which is you know to the commoner uh person it's impossible to do but it it has happened yeah so so we have all observed impossible things happen in this in this dimension uh it's just to be open to it basically got it so i guess uh, the uh, and i've heard that story as well that really inspiring story of how the mother uh, protected and saved the baby by tapping into this field and 
generating strength that she could not have in a normal scenario right so i'm guessing that was more of a chance but through this practice people are able to tap into this field and have more of these incidences is that correct yeah what what happens is actually i uh, we do a series of active meditation okay and through doing these active meditations it helps the participants to quiet their mind and any time that we can go in a silent mind, any time in our lives that there is no thoughts and we mm-hmm. can go beyond the thinking mind, we immediately, spontaneously tap into uh, this fifth dimensional realm. It doesn't matter. It could be like for a few seconds or it could be for a long period of time. But mm-hmm. the moment that we go beyond the thinking mind, our vibration changes. And okay. it rises to a much higher frequency. And mm-hmm. as, as soon as we arrive at this field of energy, this fifth dimensional field, field of energy, then tremendous amount of insight, and they call it power, but it's not a personal thing. It's the sure. divine power that becomes accessible and available. Wow. And it. It, uh, it begins to operate in a guided way. Uh, it actually guides us rather than us thinking that, oh, okay, I can access this power and I can manipulate it and I can use it for personal gain. But there's no such thing. It does become available and it does its thing for a higher purpose. That's wonderful. Now, another question I had is, uh, could you talk to us about what is third eye activation? Yeah, third third eye activation is, uh, we have to actually go a little bit further back, means that what is the third eye? And when we're referring, and a lot of us have heard about third eye, third eye, but a lot of people don't know, uh, okay, we do have a third eye, but where is this third eye? This third eye is actually the pineal gland or the pineal gland. Some people pronounce it pineal mm-hmm. gland. Some call it pineal gland. I like pineal gland better. And this the this gland, which is very small, it's in the size of a green pea. And it's shaped like a pine cone. And that's why they call it pineal gland, because of its shape. Mm-hmm. It, it looks like a pine cone. And this itty-bitty little gland is tucked in, in between the two... Uh, hemispheres of the brain. It's not a part of the brain. It's above the brain, but it's in between the two hemispheres of the brain. Sure. And and when scientists originally re- recognized that there is a gland there, and they dissected this gland, they also discovered that there is a lens, a retina, and a cornea in this gland. And so. So they call it the third eye. But there's another significant part of this gland is that this gland, uh, first of all, it's bioluminescent. It does get activated if you direct light to it and in a form of energy and it awakens. So and it gets activated. But what does this mean and what's in it for me? Sure. And what's in it for, for me is that when this gland gets activated, it produces a substance called DMT, dimethyltryptamine. It does also secrete a substance called melatonin that mm-hmm. majority of people are aware of it, and that is for regulating our sleep pattern. But the part that us as spiritual seekers are interested in is the fact that this gland is producing DMT, dimethyltryptamine, and the production of the DMT in the brain gives us our first-hand spiritual experiences, such as visions, encounters with trans-dimensional beings, uh, possibilities of time traveling, time dilation. Uh, it enhances our psychic 
and healing abilities, it will give us um, access to being a more stronger clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, um, uh, developing uh, telepathic abilities, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a whole number of different artistic uh, abilities that are that become available through the activation of the pineal gland, which uh, most people call it the third eye. Well, that was one of the best explanations I've heard about the third eye till date. Uh, so thanks a lot for that. Action Tribe, it's the size of a pea, shaped like a pine cone, tucked between the two hemispheres of the brain. It has a lens, retina, and cornea, so similar to the eye, it's bioluminescent, it gets activated by light, and the benefit is that it produces DMT. DMT is that which gives us these spiritual experiences, psychic abilities, encounters with other dimensional beings, although I haven't had one, and basically taps into uh, our more ascended abilities. So, Zarathustra, many of our listeners are on this phase of maybe activating their third eye or maybe learning these different spiritual practices that can help them ascend and evolve. So how does a person know if her third eye is open? What are some signs or feelings that one gets as the third eye is open? Um, it's a very good question because a lot of people ask me this, and, and I have a lot of people coming to my uh, various workshops that it's third eye activation, okay. um, or they purchase, Purchase my third eye activation DVD, and uh, and they're always asking me when is when is my third eye is going to get activated and mm -hmm. what is it going to look like? Sure, uh, it doesn't necessarily look like anything. It could be as third eye activation could be as subtle as all of a sudden having insights about your life and uh, what to do. Uh, which direction to go or not, or it could mm. be as powerful as uh, having visions or having encounters of, let's say, all of a sudden the Buddha appears in your room and starts to communicate with you, or you have visions of Christ uh, with your own eyes appearing to you, uh, or all of a sudden you start having powerful psychic abilities of doing things that you were not able to do psychically. Mm -hmm. So it could be very drastic. Uh, it could be very subtle. So, yeah. and, uh, and in every individual, it, it, uh, it, it, it will be different. Sure. No okay. two people are going to have the same exact experience. But uh, the subtle part of it could be just the fact that all of a sudden you start to really feel good and feel blissed out, not in an overwhelming way, but feeling just generally happy that all is well and everything is taken care of. And the ability of seeing events happening in life before they happen or being prepared for them. So it could be very, very subtle. It could be strong and drastic. And it's the whole gamut in between. Wonderful. And that statement that you mentioned, all is well, and that everything is taken care of, it's such a wonderful feeling. And I'm sure that all of our listeners will want to have that if they haven't had that already. But how did it begin for you? Could you talk to us about your uh, third eye activation? How, how was the experience like? Um, yeah, I mean, I had a number of different awakening from childhood. And uh, okay. um, um, it's been... A, a series of different things that has happened to me when I was 21 years old, having a very profound dream of, of becoming this healer. And then later on, when I was 29, 30 years old, starting to have psychedelic experiences. And it just continued on and off. But in 2009, um, okay. that was the, the birth of fifth dimensional quantum healing and awareness was that I, I received the messages. I was hearing voices whispering in my ear um, and they started to identify themselves as my fifth dimensional 
guides, and mm-hmm. they were guiding me in doing things. But in a nutshell, to make the whole long story short, yeah. is that some, sometimes in between May of 2009 to July of 2009, I, in a of nine weeks, nine, I had two, three week downloads by my fifth dimensional guides. And uh, the first three week download was that they activated my right hand and they turned my, actually both hands, but my right hand turned into a high frequency transmitter. So I was able to transmit information in a form of energy to other people and Mm -hmm. made me capable of pulling out old information. People call it bad bad energy, but there's no such thing as bad energy. That does not exist. Energy is energy. But it made me able to pull things out of people and and replace it with brand new information. But the Mm -hmm. the second uh, three week was when my third eye opened up and they started to downloading information uh, by activating my pineal gland and that gave me insights of being able to uh, actually it gave me the uh, x-ray vision of being able to look into bodies and seeing things and also being able to see the aura of people and find information about them by looking into their auric field. So thanks a lot for uh, sharing uh, uh, that insight, Zarathustra. So many things that I listened to. You spoke about fifth dimensional guide. You spoke about the s- series of downloads that you received from them. Uh, you spoke about X-ray vision and the fact that your uh, right hand turned into a high frequency transmitter. And all of this happened in May 2009. So I just wanted to go a couple of steps back. Uh, could you take us to that moment? Uh, how did it happen? What were the sequence of events that led to this? This, uh, which is the fifth dimensional guides uh, contacting you on May 2009. Yeah, m- many, many different things, but basically intensity, the intensity of my life that things began to become extremely intense to a point to that it was unbearable of uh, mm-hmm. the intensity of, of the moment. Um, um, which uh, uh, the whole series of different things and um, uh, having having an encounter with my deceased sister Mm -hmm. through a medium uh, which my sister appeared and started to channel through the medium telling me that I have these spiritual powers but I'm afraid to demonstrate it Mm -hmm. and I'm hiding hiding out and uh, she really kicked me in the butt and uh, pushed me to come out. Uh, also, all the other doors of trying to make a living and having an income, yeah. which I was always very good in creating things. Right. Everything started to everything started to shut down, and uh, the flow of life was pushing me into this direction. Now it's extremely frightening to. Um, drop everything, every facet of revenue that you have. Right. Everything gets shut down, and then you have to go out there and make a living from healing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's frightening. It's going to your family and friends and telling them I'm a fifth dimensional quantum healer. I didn't even know how to spell it. I yeah. didn't know what it meant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I had to go online and research what. It, what does it mean? Because they kept telling me, go print a business card writing fifth dimensional quantum healing. Sure. And and uh, uh, and I was like, I'm not going to make a fool out of myself by making a business card saying fifth dimensional quantum healing. I don't even know what the hell is fifth dimension or quantum oh, healing. Oh, okay. And they were telling me, go, go research that. And as I started to research this, things started to make sense. Uh... And the energy intensified. But the bottom line is, AJ, uh, is there was no choice. It wasn't like I could choose to do this or not. There was no choice. It was Mm -hmm. very clear. This is, we want you to do this. And 
there's nothing else you can do. So what happened is that nine weeks, um, they took over my body for three weeks. I remember I was living in Venice Beach. I had a loft and I'm lying down in my bedroom in the second floor for three weeks and they had taken over my mind and I know information is being downloaded, but I have no control of my body. I, there's, I cannot speak. Uh, I, I cannot think. Um, I don't know how I went. I ate. I went to the bathroom. I have no idea how things happened in three weeks. Uh, I just know I wasn't asleep and I wasn't awake. And it was a very, very exhausting period of time. And information was being downloaded continuously. Wow. And that, that took three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I had three weeks off that they gave me a break. And uh, then it happened again. And the third period, for another three weeks, they started downloading information, which on the third, uh, the second period of the three weeks is when they activated my third eye. And the same thing happened for exactly three weeks that I was completely out. And I'm glad it ended because my parents were seriously thinking about, about coming and rescuing me and taking me to a mental hospital or taking me somewhere because they were extremely worried about me because I'm not communicating. I have disappeared. Yeah. Um, right. So this is, this is uh, the very moment of this major transformation that, that happen in a body mind mechanism. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that because as you shared your story, it sort of reminded me of the story of Buckminster Fuller. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of Buckminster Fuller, uh, but uh, and this is something I posted on my Facebook <laughs> wall just a couple of days back. But he is somebody who published more than 30 books, coining the popular uh, popular terms such as Spaceship Earth, uh, uh, and he developed numerous inventions, architectural designs, and uh, popularized the widely known geodesic dome. Carbon molecules are also named after uh, Buckminster Fuller, but at one point, he was actually uh, in such a state in his life where he was going through numerous failures. He even attempted to commit suicide. He was unemployed in debt. He was a new child and winter coming. And in, in, in such a series of events, uh, he didn't, did not want to disappoint people, right, who believed in him. Uh, his company also failed and he was going to commit suicide. But as he walked, something happened. There was a voice in his mind that said, you do not have the right to eliminate yourself. You do not belong to you. You belong to the universe. And, you know, I've heard of so many people having this voice that speaks to them and it sort of was similar to what what you shared but it's quite fascinating so thanks a lot for sharing it is, yeah it is absolutely uh, uh, correct because it's interesting because uh i uh, was talking to a friend of mine a while ago and uh was asking me oh what are you planning to do are you planning to come to uh sedona or ibiza or burning man or whatever next summer okay. and i was i was saying you know my friend my life is no longer mine. <laughs> I and I've entered into this path of service. And although it appears that I have free will and I can do what I want to do, but I've signed up for this and it's over. I'm I'm just being guided by Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, and and uh, this is it. You when you enter into this path, there's no way back. And uh, they will do what they need to do with you. So your life is not yours anymore. But far out. What a nice way of giving your life up if you're going to give it to God. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. So you also teach people how to touch, cleanse, and restore the auric field, right? So for someone who hasn't heard about this before, what exactly is the auric field? And why do we need to cleanse and restore it? Uh, again, before I answer that question, I, I go have to go one step uh, uh, back sure. that this planet that we live on is a planet of energy, and uh, it's alive, and it has a pulse, uh, and has a breath, and uh, in quantum physics has proven that there is no solid matter. 
the solid matter that you're touching, uh, it's dense energy in a very dense frequency. So um, the auric field um, of human being, we since our bodies is an energy field, an energy system, it does have uh, an energy a field, invisible energy field around it that we call it the aura. And it's very actually easy to feel and to touch it. And by the right guidance, we can restore it. So in my fifth dimensional quantum healing training program in level one, the first thing on the first day that we learn is how to feel and touch the auric field. Mm -hmm. And I have not had one student up to this point that hasn't been able to touch the auric field in the first two hours that I work with them. Every single person <laughs> from any age, uh, religion, background, race, uh, social status, economic status, uh, whether they have spiritual, a spiritual background or not, do feel their auric field, energy field in the first two hours that I work with them. It's so mm -hmm. in this energy system, this field, uh, it surrounds us. It can uh, expand or contract. It can change its colors. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's, a, it, there's a wavelength to it that it's visible uh, if we train ourselves. And health issues and emotional issues always begin into this field. If this field is disturbed, then it begins to manifest in our bodies and emotional body. Got it. Got it. So your explanation, again, wonderful. It sort of reminds me of the goldfish story, which is if you go to a goldfish and ask the goldfish or tell the goldfish that you're actually living in a ball or a bowl of water, the goldfish might say, what are you talking about? Right. So we ourselves are living on a planet of energy with, as you mentioned, pulse and breath. There is no solid matter. Action Tribe, we are dense form of energy and we have a field around us, which is called the auric field. And with practice, we can improve our sensitivity towards it and we can touch and feel it. And health issues always begin in this field and only later when nothing is done about it will it manifest in your physical body. Now, Zarathustra, uh, what is psychic surgery and how is that related to auric field? Could you elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is different forms of psychic surgeries in different cultures. Uh, okay. The psychic surgery that I practice or which is available to me is an energetic surgery uh, which, uh, again, through raising my vibration to a higher frequency and raising the vibration of the room with the participants in, in much higher frequency, what happens is that as we e equally raise our vibrations uh, to these higher realms, uh, things become less dense. Okay. And then what happens is that emergence begin to take place. For example, if I use my hand and I put my hand on someone's body, uh, the, the person will have an experience as if my hand has entered into their physical body and wow. is maybe, or could be similar to a feeling like a laser beam is cutting inside their body, is cutting through the tissue. Maybe it's shaving the, the bone, uh, removing or relocating the bones. Uh, or maybe something is pulling out a tissue or a tumor or something that doesn't belong inside the body or toxins okay. coming out. Uh, there is a sensation that a, a some sort of a knife or someone's hand or some energy has entered inside the person's body and is doing surgery. That is the psychic surgery that I practice. But there, there are different cultures have their own, uh, like Filipino psychic surgeons, their physical hand enters into the, the person's 
body. So that's, you know, the most intense form of psychic surgery. So as I mentioned, there's various different sort of psychic surgery. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know if I answered your question. No, 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 actually, you, 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 in fact, did. And as you suggested, there are different forms of psychic surgery and the intense form, which I believe is practiced uh, in places in Philippines, which is where when they do the psychic surgery, it feels like or energetically the hand actually goes into the body. And you've written about this. You said that your quest sort of took you to Philippines where you were seeking psychic surgeons, which led you to meeting Alex Orbito. Firstly, and so 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 so, uh, what took you there? Like, how did you get to know about the fact that okay, mm-hmm. in Philippines there are these type of psychic surgeons? Was it something you read, or somebody told you about it? Yes, I I read a book about it, and um, and well, I also met a psychic surgeon lady who worked on me in 1990 here in Los Angeles. Okay, and uh, I found it extremely fascinating. Uh, my my life, I've been blessed by coming across some of the most powerful healers on the planet and avatars and seeing some um, some things that people would call miracles or definitely beyond the uh, five senses and the thinking mind. And I've been I've been lucky to see that. And uh, and obviously healing was a part of my destiny. So I was I was a sucker for this kind of work, <laughs> okay. and and uh, very very curious. So when I did come across this psychic surgeon lady, uh, who was trained by Filipino psychic surgeons and did work on me, that definitely arose my curiosity, and and I had the feeling that I have it in me, and uh, that started the whole journey of of searching for healers. And sure. psychic surgeons, and that's how I ended up going to Philippines. Got it. So, so which which year was this that you visited Philippines? And I I went to Philippines in I believe it was in ninety. If I'm correct, I think it was in nineteen ninety three. Uh, in September October of nineteen ninety three that I. Went went to Philippines in search of the psychic surgeons. Got it. So how was the experience like? So you're on your quest. You heard about uh, psychic surgeons in Philippines from the lady that you worked with in LA and sort of you knew deep down inside that you might have that, uh, you know, qu- that uh, uh, drive or that passion for actually get, uh, learning this uh, fascinating modality. And so you go to Philippines. How was the experience like? You know, was it easy to find uh, Alex Orbito? And, and what did you learn from? Right. Uh, Alex Orbito was easy to find because he was, uh, uh, he had a practice and a lot of people were going to see him. Okay. Uh, and from the book I had read from this lady that she connected with him and she was he guided him i thought it's going to be the same same thing for me but sure. never things are the same and uh so when i met him he he, did, he he was nice to me but he didn't have any interest in teaching me anything yeah. he uh, uh he sent me to his brother who was who lived in another province right. and uh he was a reverend and uh and I ended up being living at his ranch for a short period of time, but very, very quickly I realized that um, um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't for me, and it didn't match the fantasy I had in my mind that I will okay. be discovered and and uh, I will be taken as an apprentice, and it just didn't flow in that way, and. Um, um, and I, I, and then I, it was during my spiritual seeking, and uh, I was had already connected with Papaji in India. Uh, I was in Philippines for two months. I went to some of the psychic surgeons. Um, I it just didn't click for me with them, and sure. they did did they didn't take me, and I didn't feel like I need to push it. So I I just let it go, and I went to India to sit with my guru. Okay. Got it. So you had that experience in Philippines and then you decided to uh, move towards India. How was your experience like in India and how did you meet that guru? Because I also know that you at one point went to Dharamshala in India to observe one of Dalai Lama's personal physicians. So uh, how did you meet your guru? I'm really curious to know. I have to say I'm very impressed by your preparation. 
information <laughs> and you really do your you, you really do your homework aj <laughs> and that's, thank you that's it's my very, honor <laughs> that's very impressive i um um, the meeting with Papaji Punjaji it was um, later on. I realized that all my life I, I was getting prepared to come across the master. And Papaji's message was basically silence. Uh, and and uh, he only was teaching one thing: be quiet, be silent, which. Uh, is the very uh, basis of what I teach now. And, and uh, it revolutionized everything for me. It, was, it has tremendous amount of, of, of transformation influence on me because um, it took me out of the duality. The Papaji came from a school of Advaita Vedanta, okay. which is the teachings and the practice of non-dual, non-duality. Mm -hmm. And I had very strong resonance with this teaching because in this teaching, uh, they don't give you anything to do. It's not like any particular practice. The only okay. practice is be quiet. And, uh, um, um, and I resonated with this because I saw and I noticed it that it just immediately took me to this very unified field of of love, of silence, of quietness, and there was no, um, I, you know, I was a rebel all my life. Sure. And, uh, and I was anti any kind of organizations or anything structured, such as you have to get up at five in the morning and do meditation, or you have to be cleansing, mm -hmm. or you need to give up meat, or alcohol, or sex, or whatever, or shave your head, and and. I, I was not into any of these things. I was always telling myself there has to be a guru that teaches uh, the lazy ways man to enlightenment. Okay. <laughs> and, and I did come across Papaji because he had no rules. And for mm. me, it was like, this is my, this is my guru. Now, mm. I did become disciplined eventually but not because of spiritual practices. It's, it just took place because it felt right. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, this, is, this was the, uh, in a nutshell, um, the meeting with this sat guru, with this avatar. Um, and, and I did have some very powerful experiences with him. Um, I saw things that ha happened that he did. Um, it wasn't like to show off or demonstrating his power. It was just very secretly happened, very quietly mm -hmm. happened. But somehow he allowed me a couple of times to to be a part of it and to see it. So I knew I was definitely at the right place. So thanks a lot for sharing that wonderful uh, story with us, Zarathustra. And what you said, uh, in fact, the sentence really hit me was, all your life you were preparing to meet the master all your life you were preparing to meet the master action tribe think about this sentence because i know many of you are trying different things different modalities maybe trying to reach out to different mentors and as well and if something doesn't work uh, it might not be because of you it might be just that you, you know your style your your way of living or, or your approach uh, seeks a different master or a different mentor or, or and uh, it's not the end of the journey you, you got to keep trying out different things because ultimately all your life you are preparing to meet that master so zarathustra for someone listening to the show right now right this very moment what is that one action step that you'd like to recommend for our listeners um learn how to quiet your mind um and through act active meditations are very very simple in the absence of the thinking mind what's there in the absence of the thinking mind there is peace and there is silence and when the mind is quiet there is no problems it's just when the mind is activated problems arise because the mind cannot be it's a nature of the mind that cannot be in silence so it it operates in future or the past mm -hmm. and and that's where 
fear and anxiety and doubts dwell. But when there is no mind, it's just pure peace and bliss. So if somebody is able to get to this place, then they live a very happy life. So action drive to access the show notes for today's episode, visit my 7 forward slash 231. That's my 7 forward slash 231. When you look at yourself from a universal standpoint, something inside always reminds or informs you that there are bigger and better things to worry about. This is a quote by Albert Einstein. What does this really mean, Action Tribe? What comes to my mind is the idea of relativity. Everything in this world is either less or more depending on what you compare and contrast it with. I know that you have challenges and problems in your life, and I do too, but every once in a while, it makes sense to take a few steps back to really look at how your problem compares with the bigger and better problems that are plaguing our world. When your focus shifts from you to the world around you to service, everything changes. Action Tribe, the world has problems, and it needs you to solve them. Problems like hunger, education, human relationships, whatever the problem is, the world needs you to select the problem and then go to work on it and begin solving it. Your current problem is there for a reason. It is there so that you can overcome it, change your life and move on to bigger and better problems. So Zarathustra, tell us about a time when you had to go through a challenge. How did you come across the challenge and then what did you do? What steps did you take to overcome it? (laughs) There's been many, many of them, AJ. But... um Ultimately, um, for me, what I realized is that when I'm faced with a major challenge or any kind of challenges, I always have to remind myself that trust, trusting existence, trusting life, trusting God, trusting that which governs the universe. Some, some intelligence is running the universe before I was born and certainly after I die. So this intelligence knows what it's doing. And if this intelligence is the source of my creation, then it is the responsibility of this intelligence to provide. And I have come to realize that and recognize that. And in that I trust. So when I, when I do come across a major challenge that fear or doubts or, or anxiety or whatever arises, I always re- remind myself to sit back, take a deep breath, and trust life, it will take care of it. And I will be provided with the best decision and solution. And to this day, it's always been the same thing. I've always been provided and taken care of. Wonderful. So thanks a lot for sharing that perspective uh, with us. I think that's really powerful. Uh, In just one sentence, if you had to share that life lesson with us so that our listeners can better understand it and apply it into their lives, what would that one sentence be as a major life lesson? As a major life lesson for me? Yes. Well, the very major uh, is back to the same thing is that Really, uh, you mentioned it earlier about Albert Einstein by changing perspective, perspective is that really all is, all is well. And uh, in, in this recognition of when, when our mind becomes really quiet and when we get out of our head, uh, we begin to see the connectedness of everything. And everything is a part of ourselves. So there is really no separation. And when we realize that there is no separation, it's all a part of myself. Mm -hmm. Then there is no fear. There is no boogeyman. And in this real recognition that there is no other, it's all myself, then there is tremendous amount of comfort and expansion. And, and love that, that replaces the fear. And this is what I would share. Uh, maybe I didn't say it in one sentence. So uh, in one sentence, I would say all is well. Got it. 
Well, thanks a lot for sharing that with us. Action Tribe, are you learning some new ideas or concepts today? If you're loving the session, then make sure you hit the subscribe button on your device so that you don't miss out on future episodes. Also, feel free to share what exactly you learned today. What is that one sentence you learned or that one idea you learned as a post on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, using our hashtags, hashtag my seven chakras and hashtag action tribe so that people who need to know about our episodes and show will get to know it through you. Now, as you accumulate the knowledge that is shared on each episode, I want to also remind you of one small thing, remember not to forget how powerful your imagination is. Knowledge is based on what exists currently. Imagination is based on what can exist. And only you know what you can bring to this universe. So never underestimate the power of your imagination or your dreams or your vision because you never know how close you are to making your vivid dreams come true. And just like Albert Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the entire world. So Zarathustra, as on today, what is your life's calling? Um, <laughs> my life's calling is to share this uh, message of mm -hmm. helping to liberate as many people as possible from their fear and anxiety and the sense of duality. Nothing gives me as much joy that when I help people find inner peace and love within, within themselves, within their own hearts. Sure. This is the highest joy that I get. And in that, I see healing takes place, whether it's physical or it's emotional, or it's spiritual understanding. When, when I'm able to direct people to recognize the presence of the divine being within them, themselves, within their own hearts, that's my life calling, AJ. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Now, today you've shared with us many moments, many stories, uh, many concepts and things that you experienced. But if you had to select one defining moment that really changed your life, what would that be? Hmm. <laughs> um, it's when I had the encounter with my sister uh, and when she came uh, through the medium, the, the psychic lady, and she made it very clear to me about my mission and to demonstrate the wisdom and the power that is available that comes through me. That was the very moment that changed everything. Thanks for sharing. And now with that, we have arrived at the last round for today, which is called the Wisdom Round. And our regular listeners know that this round is all about taking notes and taking action because it's similar to a rapid fire round. So what is the best advice that someone has ever given you? Um, the best advice that I've, I got is from my father, my deceased father. And he encouraged me to follow my heart and follow my joy and, and keep going, doing what I love to do. Because in following your joy and following... Because many people, unfortunately, I've been there mm -hmm. too, yeah. they, they don't do what they love to do uh, out of fear, uh, out of their parents putting them under pressure, uh, the society, uh, their family, okay, this is not the way to make money, you're not going to make money from arts, you're not going to make money from music, you're not going to make money from healing or whatever. Uh, and a lot of us live in fear, and we don't really follow our joy and our hearts. So we end up living, having a lot of resentments and being angry uh, or, or limited and not really opening up our wings to do what we love to do. And existence, in fact, supports you against all odds when you really go for what you love to do. And the entire existence will support you, even though in the beginning it doesn't look like it and mm -hmm. it's frightening. So my message is follow your truth, follow your heart, and it will set you free. Got it. So name one personal habit that keeps you strong and keeps you going. Discipline. Having self-discipline and being self-employed 
is um, I had to develop self-discipline. And being an extremist, it was very difficult to do that. But self-discipline has been able to help me to get to where I'm at. And I'm very happy for that. Um, and a part of that is patience. Learn to be patient. And the biggest reward of being patient is more patience. And that comes from self-discipline. So do you have a morning routine? Uh, yes, I do have a morning routine. And morning routine is to make my jet fuel, which is a liver flush um, um, uh, smoothie that I make. And, um, and, and I like to sit in silence by myself. I don't like to get up and blah, blah, blah. I need a period period of silence and uh, go do a yoga class or go for a bike ride or go for a walk but definitely spend an hour or two in silence by myself got it so name a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners today um well it would be my own book lightning notes of zarathustra uh is full of uh, uh wisdoms quotes poems and uh, uh quotation marks about the nature of ourselves and the nature of existence. Perfect. We'll have this up in the show notes. Action Tribe, I know how much you love our book recommendations. And I know that many of you get these books as soon as you hear them shared on the show. And that's why Audible.com is offering Action Tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can check out this service. In case you don't know, Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your various devices, including bestsellers like The Chakra System by Anadia Judith, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. To download your free audiobook today, go to my 7 forward slash free book. Once again, the link is my 7 forward slash free book to start listening. So thanks a lot for joining me, Zaratustra, for today's show. It was such uh, a pleasure chatting with you. Learned so much, and I'm sure our listeners are busy taking notes and also implementing what we've learned today in their lives. But before you go, tell us something that you are grateful for and also tell us how we can find you online. Uh, well, I'm just grateful for being, for being alive and just being a part of th this moment in our time uh, having this uh, front seat row uh, uh, that, that I'm able to just see the transformation that is taking place in human consciousness and being a part of it, I'm very grateful for that. Um, um, and uh, I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? Uh, it was, how do we find you online? Oh, yeah. Uh, my website is zarathustra.tv. Z A R A T H U S T R A dot TV. And uh, that's how your audience can come on my website and uh, check the schedule of my events and um, the free meditation as well as uh, everything that we offer. I do offer, I have created uh, an academy. It's called Fifth Dimensional Academy of. Of higher consciousness I do broadcast for one and a half hour every Tuesday from 10 in the morning till 1130 Pacific Standard Time it's a free webinar we do uh, a series of active meditations and then there is a transmission and then there's the Q&A and everyone is welcome to come and join us and there's no obligation you can come in and leave as you wish so there you go action tribe zaratustra.tv z-a-r-a-t-h-u-s-t-r-a dot tv am i correct in the spelling uh z-a-r-a-t-h-u-s-t-r-a dot tv Zarathustra. So there you go, Action Tribe. Uh, Zarathustra, thank you so much for joining me on today's show, talking to us about the power of fifth dimensional healing and taking us one step closer to a human revolution. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to my -E -E -N chakras.com. Download your free.